He has risen. He has risen indeed. This is how the early church greeted one another on this day. Believers have always attached a very deep meaning to the resurrection. If there's no resurrection, there's no Christian faith. Death is not the last word. He has risen. He's not resuscitated. He is resurrected. I don't know if you've heard of the woman who one day was in her kitchen looking through the window and she saw her German shepherd was shaking the neighbor's little bunny in the garden. And this family didn't really get along with the neighbors, so she knew she had to do something about this tragedy. And so she grabs a broom and a shovel, she rushes out at the dog, and he drops the bunny. And as she goes closer, she sees that the bunny is dead and realizes he has trouble. But as the Afrikaans say, a bird mark a plan. So she takes the bunny home, she gives it a bath, she blow dries its hair with a hairdryer, and it comes out really fluffy. And she sneaks back into her neighbor's yard and puts the rabbits in the cage. An hour later, she hears screams from next door and she runs out to ask the neighbor what's going on. And the woman says, Our bunny, our bunny. He died two weeks ago. We buried it and now he's back. I wonder what people must have thought about this resurrection. Is this real? Because I mean, if you're dead, you're dead. There's no expectation for anything to happen further yet. On Saturday, Jesus is in the grave. And on Sunday, He's resurrected and he appears to many people. Paul writes in Corinthians, he appeared to 500 people who were gathered. He appeared to individuals. Why this information? To bring it home. He really did rise from the dead. No one ever responded to the claims that Jesus appeared to the 500 people. Not, not one person came forward and changed their story. It wasn't a conspiracy. They are witnesses. They are authoritative historical sources. It happened. He lives. He lives. And today we read about that resurrection on Sunday morning in John 20. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. And so she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, they've taken the Lord out of the tomb and we don't know where they've put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and he looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. And then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. And the cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went inside and he saw and he believed. They still did not understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. And then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Mary Magdalene later went to the disciples with the news. I've seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. Now, during this time, people were buried in rock uh, graves. And in front of the grave entrance, there was a large, very heavy stone that was rolled in front of the door of the grave. And it was impossible to just quickly roll the stone away. It's heavy, it's big, it's fixed, it's, it's impossible. And here, while it was still dark, 
Mary sees that the stone has been rolled away. This is the symbol of resurrection, and this is what resurrection is all about. Stones are rolled away. If someone was to ask me what the, what the resurrection is about, my answer is it's always to roll away the stone, the stone of our hearts, of prisons, of graves, of darkness. And in this encounter today, in our scripture reading, three invitations from this Resurrection Sunday morning event. The first, go to the grave. We read in verse 1 that early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb. While it was still dark. This is a very important piece of information in the story. Because have you ever noticed that every person to whom Jesus appeared after his resurrection found themselves in while it was still dark? Every one of them is still living in the darkness of Good Friday and they must receive the wonderful news of resurrection, hope and light. Mary, she's crying. She's in mourning. She's lost the one she loves with everything in her, she loves this person and he's gone. The Emmaus disciples, they're hopeless, saddened. They tell each other, all hope is lost. The disciples behind the closed doors are scared and anxious. Thomas is experiencing the darkness of losing his faith. He struggles with doubts to such an extent that it borders on unbelief. And Peter, Peter is wrestling with the deep emotions of failure, regret and guilt that brings darkness. And Jesus doesn't appear to these people and say, hey, come on, can't you see it's Easter Sunday morning? Put a smile on your face and get on with life. No, in their darkness. He encounters them and his presence, his words, his gaze brings faith and hope and love back into their hearts. While they were still in the dark and their difficult circumstances, they encounter the resurrected Christ and they know their friend is with them in a new and different way. So what does this mean for us? Well, I know that many of us find ourselves in the dark. Some of us are in the darkness of illness, a loved one that has passed away, the darkness that the person I love doesn't love me back, the darkness I experience because my children live far away, for some of us, it's that struggle with chronic pain, the fight to break free from an addiction, growing old on our own. And for some, the darkness of being diagnosed with a terminal illness. But Jesus comes. The risen Christ comes to us who cry like Mary. He comes to us who, like the Emmaus pilgrims, feel hopeless. He comes to us who, like Thomas, are doubters and unbelievers. He comes to us who sit behind closed doors with fear and dread. He comes to us who feels that our efforts are fruitless. He comes to us who, like Peter, struggle with feelings of guilt and regret and sadness. And you know what? He keeps coming. He keeps coming. Can you go to the grave while it's still dark? Can you stay near the grave? That's the first invitation on this Resurrection Sunday. Go to the grave so that you can see the stone is rolled away. Christ is risen. He is alive. Our second invitation is to see. We read that Simon Peter and John ran to the grave and both of them saw and believed. Sometimes it takes a while to see that the stone has really been rolled away. 
It may not feel or look like it. You may not recognize it immediately. You have to look and look again. It took a while for Mary and the disciples to recognize Jesus. Mary at first thinks Jesus is a gardener when he appears from the empty tomb. The Emma's disciples think he's a stranger. Peter didn't recognize Jesus on the beach at first. And sometimes we don't notice it right away either. We don't recognize him. Maybe because of two reasons. The first, we don't come out of the grave. God has rolled a stone away so that we don't have to stay in the grave. But there are things that keep us in the grave and we cannot re receive the resurrection life. Unforgiveness, guilt, doubt, fear, pride. Today, I want to invite you, come out of the grave. God is calling out to you, come out of the grave. The stone has been rolled away. The second reason we don't see is because I think we sometimes get numb in our, for our circumstances. The resurrection invites us to look and look again. Chesterton said, learn to look at things familiar until they look unfamiliar again, because familiarity is the greatest of all illusions. Simon Peter and John goes to the tomb. Simon Peter goes in and he investigates. He has to look and he looks again until he sees. John sees and believes right from the beginning. But Peter needs to stop and take a look. And I think the cancer of our time is that we think we know, we think we understand, we think we've worked things out in our families, in our marriages, in our communities, in our friendships. Stop. Look. Look again, look again, things are not as they seem. The stone has been rolled away. And you might say, Melissa, how do I know when to look again, when to stop and see? Maybe some guidelines. Pay attention to the burning in your heart. If you feel your heart is on fire for the Lord with love, with passion, with hunger, with a longing, stop. Look again. Pay attention to the moments when a wave of emotion comes over you and maybe you're feeling tearful about what you've done or what you've seen. Stop. Look again. Pay attention to the moments when you're drawn into a deeper love, hope and faith. Stop and look again. Pay attention when you experience peace in your life. When you have that experience that everything is well, all shall be well. No one else sees it like I do, but I know that I know that I know. Stop and look again so that you can see the stone has been rolled away. He is risen. He is working something new in your life. You might not see it immediately, but he's there. He's there. Our third invitation is to tell. We read in verse 18, Mary Magdalene, when she ran back, she told them what Jesus had said to her. She says a testimony. She tells a story of a different way of life, a story of hope. And our telling is not only just always with words. Sometimes it means I need to do something or start living a way of life, a resurrection life. Peter is invited to tell by taking care of Jesus' sheep. He asks him to do that. The disciples behind the closed doors are sent. The Emma's disciples immediately jump up from the table. They go back to Jerusalem. They need to go and tell in a new way. In all these circumstances, nothing has changed, but everything has changed. They still live at the same address. The politics are still the same. The challenges around them are still the same, but internally, everything has changed. 
I don't have to face these challenges alone anymore. I no longer have to do life alone. God is with me. The risen Christ is here. He, he will lead me. The power that raised him from the dead is also in me. What the resurrection of Jesus promises is that things can always be new again. It's never too late to start over. No betrayal is final. No sin is unforgivable. Every form of death can be conquered. There is no loss too great. So I can, I, I can follow him. I testify and I tell by going with him into the resurrection life. I follow him to the Marys in our world and wipe away tears. With him, I go to those who struggle with doubt and unbelief. And we share in spiritual conversations and connection. With him, I go to those who sit behind closed doors in fear. With him, we go to those who are running away, who are hopeless. And with him, we go to the Peters of our world, to those who feel they failed and who just want to give up. And of course, we can't be everything for the whole world, but I can ask, Lord, where can I share the resurrection today? Where can I testify? Where can I tell? Where can I share the story of hope? This reality of hope. This morning, we're going to end by, we, by witnessing to our faith, confessing our faith. And I want to invite you wherever you are, are today to, as the words come up on the screen, Confess this with me out loud. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. The third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Three invitations on this Resurrection Sunday. Go, see, tell the stone has been rolled away. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. And Lord, we thank you for this good news, this life-changing news, the transformative power of your resurrection. We long to experience that in our life. We long to experience how you make the impossible possible, how you bring what was dead to life, how you make the old new again. That is the desire of our heart, Lord, for our lives, our relationships, our world. We want to follow you into this life. We want to know it, experience it. And Lord, we long to share it. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for joining us again today. And if you would like someone to pray with you, please contact us. Our team members are ready to speak to you, pray with you, set up a one-on-one -on -one online conversation with you if that is the need you have. Receive the blessing. The love of God our Father and the grace of Jesus Christ, the peace of the Holy Spirit remain with us all now and forevermore. Amen.